So here's a little information about the printer itself. Um, okay, so first of all, the you're going to get all these parts, and all the orange parts you see are from the original rewrap that I built. Almost all of them have been replaced. As you can see, the only parts I'm using from the original are the smooth rod holders, the four of them there, and the, the, the X stop and the Z stop, as well as the extruder head, which is the weights tilt extruder. Um, everything else has been pre-printed, and it's totally fresh. Um, they are printed pretty well. Uh, other features about the, the thing, all the hardware that you see here are from the reprap, so you can literally disassemble all of this and um, build the reprap. Probably take you three or four hours maximum, even if you're new to this. The motors are all Kaisen NEMA 17 motors, the 1124090. Um, they're the same ones from Ultimachine. The hobbed bolt is actually also from Ultimachine. This is the best hob bolt you can get as said by many print shops that I've spoken to. Um, the extruder head is from hotends.com. These things are known to be very good and they sell out immediately, immediately as soon as they come on the market. The highest temperature is about 250 degrees. After that, the PPET or PT, the plastic around it starts to kind of soften a bit, so they caution it. You should use a fan when you, when you um, print at temperatures above that, but Unless you're using some crazy material, you're probably not going to need to. Um, the motor, as I said in my other video, I've moved the motor up so that the belt under for the table is straight and you don't have to worry about any tension problems. So uh, you can see the table is actually on some uh, razors. I've edited those and uh, it looks like I'm using the belt stops from the original Prussia, Prussia set as well. Um, no tension problems at all. There's no issues with that. And when you slide the table, <clears throat> it goes. It actually goes above the motor, clears it just fine, and it's programmed to stop before it even hits the motor, so there's no issue there. Um, the the x-axis, it's, again, you have full, full, full range of motion. You have this entire plate as a print surface. It's 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters, and I would say probably about 190 or 200 millimeters tall. Uh, you could easily switch out these smooth rods to get longer ones, and they can go up for as long as you like. Um, above this, I would say maybe another five inches above these smooth rods, it might start to get unstable because you see there's no bracing. Um, at this point, I have not had any problems with the fact that there is no bracing. I was expecting to put some sort of an A-frame on the back of this, but there's absolutely no need to. I print at 150, 100 to 150 millimeters per second, and it's got no problems. I do, however, have to brace the thing because the motors are very torquey and it starts to kind of jump around or move around. So it just seems to work better when it's braced. Uh, aside from that, all the wires for the motors are uncut. I don't like cutting any wires. I like keeping them the original length. I want to be able to rebuild it into anything that I want. This particular system, I've actually came up with some designs to switch out the extruder head and put a, like a pen on it or a Sharpie. You can make it a 2D plotter. Um, if there was an attachment I could find that was a pretty good Dremel, I could probably turn it into a CNC, although it'd probably have to cut really slowly. Um, I also have designs to actually extrude a light cure material with this. So, I, you know, you can see I'm really sad to let this go, but unfortunately I really do have to move it because I am moving to Pennsylvania. Again, not my choice. <laughs> um, anyways, you get a lot with this. You get a whole bunch of extra nuts and bolts. And I'm giving it to you at cost. The, the, the electronics are the Sanguino Lulu. Um, with the genuine Polo drivers, they're actually real. I got most of my parts from North Cal Reprap, which, if you know anything about it, it's a pretty reputable source, and the guy is really, really good, really cool guy. Uh, the Z, Z, he, I mean, the Z axis is also using aluminum couplers, which is very high quality. It's full LMUU8. Um, linear bearings as well as 608ZZ shielded bearings. So this is a really, it's a high-end kind of set. I researched every single part of the Prussia 2 to really build the best thing I could for a reasonable price. Um, I think I'm going to price it at right at $600. I think that was my cost. It comes with this plastic spool. This is the white ABS. I'm, I'm getting, I'm, there's another one in the mail as well. I'm going to give you that as well. Um, End stops are mechanical. The, the optical end stops are not known to be as reliable. In theory, they work well, but they don't. There's the hot plate. 
is from a local print shop here in San Francisco. It's actually just a few blocks away from me. I got all the hardware from the local print shop as well, all the smooth rods and everything, and the, the bolts, nuts and bolts, are from McMaster Car. These uh, the M3 screws are 12.2 uh, alloy, so they're the strongest you could possibly get. I don't think you could possibly strip the threads off them if you tried. The springs are actually not pen springs. They're legitimate springs they have a lot more tension to them and keeps the plate really flat this is a piece of silicate glass on top you can see i'm using just some kapton tape on top of it to get the abs to stick um, i'll also give you a roll of kapton tape with it um yeah about the only things that you'll need are probably a dremel is a good idea because printing with abs or pla you'll always have some parts that could need some tooling and smoothing um, maybe a bottle of acetone because that helps smooth the ABS as well. Uh, tweezers. These are my favorite tweezers, so I'm not going to give you my tweezers. And that's about it. <clears throat> I'm more than happy to teach you as all teach you all that I know. And if you have any issues with it, I'm, I'm I'd be thrilled to help you solve them um, in the future or anytime. Uh, I really put a lot of effort into building this, and I really am sad to see it go. But if you're interested, um, please shoot me an email or let me know. Um, the wiring, this wiring is high temperature, 800 or 900 degree Fahrenheit um, from McMaster car. And this wiring for the heat hot plate, this is actually 16 gauge uh, speaker cable. There's um, the hot plate and the, the temperature sensor is attached underneath there. The power supply is from the reputable eBay seller of these particular power supplies. It's a 30 amp power supply. It's more than enough power than you need. Um, the wiring to the actual system is is just um, like a light wiring from home appliance things. It doesn't get warm at all. There's no issues with it at all. The, the electronics work really well, like surprisingly well. I did not expect them to work that well. I expected them to have to like hack it and change it and edit some things around, but no, it works great. Um, prints really well. ABS is very finicky to print with, particularly this spool that I got from Czech Republic. Um, the seller on eBay, it's, it's, I mean, I don't know why there aren't reviews for it, but I don't like it at all. I think PLA is really, really nice, and you can see this, this green piece is printed with PLA, and it's, it's probably the most accurate thing I've ever seen printed. Um, it's, it, with PLA, with the right environment, with a little bit of a fan or a little air blowing, you can get down to probably point, probably 50 microns, and it's totally accurate, even going up vertical, any direction. It's really, really nice. Really amazing. ABS is, I found, is really finicky, especially this one. It, it's it got a hard time getting it to stick to the plate. That's why I use the cap on tape. Um, and it, it warps like crazy. So you have to model your, your items that you're printing really carefully. And on top of that, in the middle of the print, it'll just kind of bump off the plate and it'll just ruin your whole print after an hour of printing. So I'm not really that good at printing with ABS. I've tried putting a box over it, keeping the temperature stable. What works best for me is, is having two fans kind of far away while it prints. Um, but it's, it's like anything I do, it's difficult. All these white parts that you see, I've very carefully printed them. And they, they printed pretty well. I mean, this is before I knew as much as I know now, and I was able to get you know pretty damn good prints. But they're also modeled really well, such that they control the warpage. And that is a very minimal problem um, for these particular prints. I have been printing larger items, which seem to warp a lot more. And I have to put cross-drilled holes in them and a whole bunch of other things in them to get them to print properly. Uh, I've printed some extra parts as well, so you'll get those. You get, Like I said, you get all of the parts you need to put together the pressure to if that's your choice, if you want to put it back together. I personally do not like it because it's very limited. You don't get the full X range. You probably get about 150 millimeters. You don't get the full Y range. Again, you get like 150, 160 millimeters, and you really don't get the Z range. You might get maybe 80 millimeters in the Z range max. That means you could probably print this tall, this tall on a Prussia 2 with the Wade's extruder at least. And then it's this, the motors just start running into the A-frame. So that's why I like this a lot better. This goes apart and comes together really, really easily. These plates, I used a drill press to drill them. What I did was I got these two pieces of wood, taped them together really, really tightly, really well, uh, mapped out the holes, mapped out this hole, and then measured um, flat lines, and I uh, used a drill press to drill the holes 
exactly on both boards identical. So it's really, it's totally square and it's totally solid. You can see it's like totally solid. There's, there's, there's no rock to the unit at all. It's super solid. Um, and it's, it's wonderful. I mean, I'll try to put up another video of it printing. There is one video that, of the X carriage that I, I designed and I put it up on Thingiverse, and actually I think 50 or 60 people have downloaded it. Um, it's a particularly good X carriage design, I think, because uh, first of all, the, the, the smooth rods are vertical, and it allows the print head, the extruder, to breathe a lot better than the other designs, which have it hanging down between the two uh, smooth rods. Um, this is important because you don't want the plastic to kind of heat up before it reaches the brass tip because it can clog and it can cause other issues. Um, it works really well. I really like this, this design that I have. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. Bye-bye.